Thank you for joining us. My name is Fahad. I'm the founder and CEO of Adva Biotechnology. I'm going to introduce to you today the Adva X3 platform. So before we talk about the platform, let's talk about the challenges that we have in autologous cell manufacturing. The three main challenges are quality, capacity, and logistics. So let's drill down a little bit into the quality. So the main problem or the, the highest challenge that we have in the terms of quality is labor and not just labor dependent, but highly qualified labor. So we need scientists to run these processes because there's decision making. This is not an exact uh, science. It is a lot based on our knowledge. The next thing that challenges us is, of course, the donor to donor variation. We have different donors with different backgrounds, which affects, of course, the way that the cells perform in our system. The third challenge is that we don't really know what's happening inside the system or inside our culturing. We measure once in a while a few parameters. We put the cells in the incubator, have no idea what's happening. So we need much more in-process controls to really control, not only measure, but really control. And that basically uh, results with an, an viable process. And if we look at viability, there's hundreds of different CAR T's and each one has a little different process. So how could we really uniform everything and make it uh, uh, and bring it to quality. The next challenge is of course capacity. So capacity goes back to the first point of highly qualified labor. We have, we're dependent on highly qualified labor, which is of course uh, not that redundant. The other uh, uh, issue is of course the infrastructure, clean rooms, aseptic processing, very expensive in infrastructure. The next thing is the larger footprint. We need a clean room. That clean room needs air handling systems. So the footprint is huge, reduces our capacity. Complex uh, comparability, moving from building to building, from facility to facility requires comparability. How do we do that? It's a big challenge. And of course, there's almost no central quality assurance. So if we can have central quality assurance, someone releasing once all the materials, testing once all the processes, of course, we'll have better capacity. The third challenge is logistics. So what do I mean by logistics? The multi-vendor, multi-supply chain is very difficult to handle. Cold, cold chain shipment, so sending a shipment of, of, of cells from the hospital to the facility and back is very expensive, very complicated. Of course, the footprint that requires for that logistics, warehouses, cooling rooms, etc. Uh, the, oh, the issue of chain of custody, who is responsible for what with all that critical logistics? And again, central QA. Before we jump in to the, to the system itself on the platform, I'd like to introduce you to a sentence that was told back in the 1960s by Watts Humphrey. And that sentence says that innovation is the process of turning ideas into manufacturable and marketable form. So it's not enough to have a really good science, a really good CAR-T, if we cannot manufacture it and bring it to patients, basically there's no innovation. So let's go into the ADVA uh, platform or the basis of the ADVA platform. We looked at the challenges and let's see how we can solve them. So the issue of logistics and, and labor, etc., could be solved by, by basically manufacturing and automation. And that's not new to anyone. If you automate, there's less labor. If you automate, it's much more accurate. But what's critical in this case is that highly qualified labor intensive. So how do we take that down? We need to have a system that will have decision making, that will have machine learning, that will have artificial intelligence. And that means that the system has to operate based on sensors, based on online sensing of how much, as much as possible, uh, parameters. The sec second thing that we talked about in the terms of capacity is the decentralized and, and even point of care manufacturing. So if I can take my manufacturing and bring it to the patient, a lot of that logistics and huge footprint is basically eliminated. And how do you do that? Only if you can control from a central location. Because again, this is a drug. We have to control it. So we need decentralized manufacturing with a centralized control, meaning remote access, meaning alerts, meaning all these uh, uh, different automation uh, um, properties. 
Another major point is simplicity. We cannot depend on highly qualified personnel, so we need a technician to run it, as simple as possible, a error-free system, something that could reduce the need for these highly qualified um, personnel. The next challenge is, of course, the issue of, of the variability in the different processes, and that means flexibility. When we develop a system, we need to think of flexible options, of how, of different, how can we put different processes in the same system? How could we easily reconfigurate the system, hopefully software-wise only, to allow you to do many different processes on the same device? So, I want to introduce to you the Adva X3 platform. The Adva X3 platform is a closed and automated system that basically has all these parameters that we were talking about. It took all the unit operations that are done in this industry and put that into one box, one simple to operate box. It's based on, on industry 4.0 uh, standards, meaning we have remote access, we have sensing, we have artificial intelligence, and practically building all that needs to decentralize in one system. The Adva system has a few uh, interesting capabilities. One, we have 13 different controlled parameters. And when I say controlled, it's not just measured, it's controlled, meaning you put a set point and it will be maintained through the whole process. So we can really optimize and really get 24 seven data on what's happening on your cells. And these parameters include pH, dissolved oxygen, glucose, lactate, glutamine, glutamate, temperature, flow rates, all four gases, so CO2, nitrogen, air, oxygen. And that's just the beginning. The system has the flexibility of running different amounts of media. So it can start from a reservoir of 100 ml, and go up to 1.8 liters just in the reservoir, in the whole system, something like 10 liters. The cone itself, and I'll show you in a second the cone. So the culturing chamber could culture 10 million cells all the way to 20 billion cells in the same chamber without the need to replacement. Very easy to, pro to program, very easy to control, very easy to automate, and therefore very flexible. Let's go into the lab and see the system. As you can see in front of you, the Adva X3 system has basically four compartments. On the right hand side, we have a refrigerator, eight liter refrigerator that allows you to uh, hold the media at whatever temperature you want. The second chamber is the incubator. And you can see the door opening, the drawer coming out. And on the back hand of that drawer, you can see pumps, valves, connectors. That's basically your bioreactor control system and a single use kit, which I'll discuss in a second. On the left hand part, you can see a drawer, another drawer exactly like the one uh, on the right hand, but this time not refrigerator. And that is to maintain all your process materials. On the top, there's a touch screen, 13 inch touch screen that could basically uh, control the full system. And on the bottom for your um, ease of use, there's a keyboard if the touch screen is not comfortable. The other part of the system is basically a single use kit. And what you see here is practically four different elements. The first one is the reservoir or what we call the condition chamber. Condition chambers Purpose in life is to take media from the refrigerator, put it into the tank, condition it to the temperature, pH, DO, glucose, lactate levels that we want, and feed the cone. The second part is the cone, which is the culture chamber, and I'll talk about it in a second. The third part is, of course, all the tubing, sensors, etc. The nice thing about it, that it comes pre-assembled on a tray, and this tray is very easily settled inside the drawer. Every pump, every tube is in front of its correct pump. Therefore, the assembly is very simple and practically it looks very complicated and it is very complicated, but the assembly is simple and straightforward. So now let's go into the cone itself. The cone is basically a retention cham chamber. And what you see here on the left-hand side of, the, of this uh, um, figure is practically the cone and an enlargement of the bottom part. These blue balls represent the cells. So think of media coming through the bottom, going through a mesh or a filter that allows very uniform flow and basically flows through the cells. So we have a very, very gentle flow of media through the cells. Sensors are basically embedded where the cells are, which practically means that we measure exactly what happens within that chamber. So we have four different 
types of, of culturing in this system. The first one is practically like a flask or a, a bag, and you can see it on the left-hand side. It's the cone itself, now with a little bit of media, practically identical to a flask with two main differences. One, you have a sensor, so you can sense pH, DO, uh, and temperature where your cells are. And the second is we have a gassed headspace which allows you to control. So you can control your pH deal. The second part would be a fed batch or batch um, mode where we gently add media. You can add virus, you can add beads, you can add supplements, and the system will automatically add that into the system. The third would be once the system is full. Once that cone is full, now we are at a point where we're switching into perfusion. So how does the perfusion work? We said that the, the reservoir or that condition chamber is intended to condition the media. So we put the media, for example, at 100% oxygen, and in the cone itself, we want 50% as an example. So once media drops down, the, the oxygen levels in that cone drops down below 50, we're gonna have a recirculation. So me, fresh media with 100% will come into the cone, and the waste media with less than 50% of oxygen will come out, go into the, to the condition chamber, conditioned again, and recycle. So this way we can maintain the exact parameters of pH and, um, and oxygen in the chamber and recycle the media as much as needed. Once we have things like glucose or lactate that now are out of range, for example, low glucose levels or high lactate levels above the set point, the system will automatically switch. And instead of recycling the media, it will take the waste into the waste. So media that had been depleted will go to waste. Fresh media from the refrigerator will come into the system and feed the system and the system will recycle again. So we'll always play between perfusion and recirculation to maintain the parameters and to be as optimal as possible in use of media. I wanna show you a graph, just to give an example. What you see here, this is online data that you get on all 13 parameters. But what we basically see here, the blue line is oxygen, is dissolved oxygen levels. The, the yellow, or sorry, the orange, uh, Stripe that at 30% is basically the set point, and the brown on the bottom is the pump that pumps in the media. So what you see, the cells were at 70% dissolved oxygen, within a couple of days dropped down to 30, and now the system starts to kick in. So media starts to perfuse in, and you can see basically the pump accelerating through the days based on the consumption. And practically you can really see how the system learns that specific donor and towards the end maintains a very tight and precise uh, parameter control. And that brown curve basically represents the growth of the cells. Once your cells are ready, and you can know that by sampling or basically by, by the, the data coming out of the system, we go to the next step and that is volume reduction, wash and formulate. So how do we do that? Volume reduction, quite simple. Take out the media from the system. And then what we do is we pump in wash buffer. So the system will pump in your wash buffer, dilute out the residual media, and practically you're washed. Then you can reduce the volume again. If you want to formulate, you can pump in, for example, DMSO or whatever cryoprotectant that you want, mix the cells, the system will mix them very uniformly, and basically pump them out into an almost final bag. Why am I saying almost? Because then you have to do your QC, etc but practically that bag could go to freezing. So just to wrap up, the Advex 3 platform, based on the continuous adaptive multi-parameter control system, has it whatever is needed in order to really decentralize your manufacturing. It's automation that reduces your labor and cost. It has sensors and controls of 13 different parameters, machine learning, AI to enable simplicity, very simple assembly, it's a very simple assembly, very simple to operate and very, very flexible, enabling you to develop on it and go all the way to GMP. So for any information, please contact us at our website or in directly to info at Thank you very much.